So without cell sorting, there is no research. This project doesn't exist. Everyone should be able to sort. So I think a machine like the S3 is a game changer. Two years ago, we didn't have a cell sorter. How hard would it be to go to travel somewhere else and use someone else's core? It's hot, there's traffic. You know, the NYU is probably 45 minutes by car from here. They're doing construction on the Brooklyn Bridge. My cells are in a container, but it is very stressful because as you sit there, you realize that every minute they're dying. interesting thing that, that, that brought me to multiple myeloma is it is potentially controlled by a cancer stem cell. And so we now have um, better therapies and so we can treat patients and we can actually many times drive them into complete remission. But invariably that tumor, the, that cancer will come back and that's led to the idea that even though we have effective therapies now, we are not able to eradicate all the, the cells and there must be some cell that remains in those patients. Um, hiding, secretive, dormant, chemo-resistant. That is really a cell that we want to target. We don't want to only eliminate cancer for a short period of time therapeutically. We want to be able to go after that dormant cancer stem cell. CD138 and CD38 are well-known markers for plasma cells. Um, and CD138 is specifically uh, the marker that uh, distinguishes between a precursor plasma cell and a fully differentiated plasma cell. So we wanted to put it to the test and see if these uh, populations actually do merit uh, the qualification of a cancer stem cell. But I mean, this is pretty clear. I need to isolate a very small population in a way that I'm not destroying the integrity of the population. So really, the only way to do that is via cell sorting. We did have to go to NYU, and I was able to do sorts there, but coming back, a lot of my cells, you know, died in transit. I'd say, well, how are we doing? And she, she would say, you know, 25% of them are alive. 25%, and you know, as her PI who is paying for this enterprise, that's really distressing. Unless that changes, the project was going to have to come to a halt. That would have been a really tough conversation um, to have with Danielle. And that's when the S3 came on our radar. So the S3 is really user-friendly because it's not this huge beast of a piece of equipment. So it's not intimidating. You know, you turn it on and it sort of runs through its checklist and then it says, okay, we're all done. We've done all of the, the tests and the machine is ready to go. Do your experiment. But now that we have it here, I can do it every day. And so that's 10 experiments every week that I can get done. It definitely sped things up. Now my problem is trying to manage all my data, you know, and trying to analyze it so that I can present it effectively. Danielle used to come into my office and we would spend a lot of time looking at the sort. Did we get the same population each time? What's different about the population? What might have been different? She almost never shows me that anymore. I look at the data because I know she can just say, yep, 99% pure every time. That's a big difference. We have more confidence in um, defending our story because now we're looking to publish you know, our work so we can say, yes, we started with the pure population and this is what we saw. I have another student in the lab. So he came to me and said, could we sort um, these breast cancer lines and identify the stem cell population and then I'm gonna test my model in this population. And we were like, yeah, sure, let's try it. What's, what's the harm? It's gonna cost us the cost of buying the kit and a day of your time. And that is a real benefit. That enables my students and myself to explore areas that are gonna move my research program forward without being so burdened by the cost, the time, the labor personnel, I can say yes more. So I think that a machine like the S3 has been one way that I can be bigger, I can be broader, I can do science the way that it should be, I can do science the way that I want to do science. Oh,
I'm not as limited by um, a piece of equipment. I'm more limited by how far can I see? And I think that's, that's the way we all should do science.